And we're on. Today's the guest. We've got Johnny Mad Dog there. First of all, John, I just want to thank you for coming on the show, mate. No problem, uh, James. A uh, pleasure and uh, nice meeting you. Ah, likewise. And I had a lot of messages for you trying to get on the show, so I'm right. glad I eventually got you. No and problem. Yep. I don't sit with any questions, Johnny. So I always like to go right back to the start where it all started and yep. how it became the life you got involved in. So right. Right. where did you grow up, mate? Well, I was born in Belfast in 1963. Um, born into the Troubles in 1969. The Troubles is the conflict what uh, happened in, in Northern Ireland between the IRA and Lawless Power Militaries. And it went on for 30 odd years. And I was I was born into it. I grew up uh, in it and I became the person I was because of the Troubles. I became a leader of the Ulster Freedom Fighters and the Ulster Defence Association which is a loyalist paramilitary group who was defending the, the loyalist people against the professional IRA and Republican elements. Mm-hmm. What age I, were you, Johnny? Well, I, I didn't join the part the, the organisation until I was 18, 19. But prior to that, I was inf- engaged in um, sectarian troubles right, th- right through most of my life. That's the way Belfast was then. It was a war zone, and it was a sectarian war between Catholics and Protestants. You had street battles every day, almost every day, uh, 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 of the week. How uh, far yeah. were you from a Catholic area? You were just, you lived, I, I grew up living beside Catholics and I grew, grew up having Catholic friends and when 69 came, I was eight or nine years of age, I woke up one morning and half of my street, the houses in it had been burned out and they had been Catholic houses and um, the Protestants had burned them out and likewise on the, on, on the other side, the Catholics had burned Protestants out because like Scotland today, Protestants and Catholics lived side by side and they were friendly until the civil rights of 1969. That changed everything. And uh, just overnight, uh, the two communities were split and uh, uh, segregated where Catholics lived in Catholic areas and Protestants lived in Protestant areas. Is that because it was tit for tat then, the houses that's, getting burnt down? That's what it was, yes, yes. And then it just became a pre- predominantly Protestant area and a predominantly Catholic uh-huh. area. And no Catholic would have lived in a Protestant area and vice versa. Uh-huh. Because obviously, if you see houses getting burnt down, you're going to be angry. So yeah. in your mind, you're what to retaliate? Well, 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 at the time when I woke up, I was a young a, a young boy at the time. I woke up and, and half the, the houses were still burning. But some of these people, Catholics, had been my friends who I'd played with. But on unbeknown to me at a young age, I didn't realise what, what, what all was going on. But as life went on and the years went on, I, I just got adapted into it and I grew into it. I had no other choice. So to become the leader, Johnny... You must have, where did those leadership skills come into? Did you learn from anybody? Did anybody take you under their wing? Well, obviously, it's probably just like the British Army, where if you're a good soldier, you're recognised by the, by the brigadiers and, and the leaders above you. And obviously, they, they will put you forward or put your name forward to be, because I believe, in my opinion, you would have to have certain skills to be a leader of, 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 of uh, numbers of men. Mm-hmm. And obviously, they, obviously, people above me had put me forward and obviously chosen me to be a leader. What's a good leader for you? What, what is a good leader? Well, someone that can maintain discipline and someone that can uh, effectively match the enemy with what they're doing to your people. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that's what I've done. And I had them skills. I had that determination to get the best out of the volunteers. And uh, uh, the most important thing was respect. And I think the volunteers respected me as I did respect them. Because you have got a massive following and a massive respect in Belfast. I did have, and I, I was a leader. And at one time, I was like God. And obviously, the, the, the other side hated me. And then it became, uh, when all the infighting started, and half of the other ones, my own people, started disliking me. But I would put that all down to the, the personality clashes and jealousies. How For, many people stay in Shankill Road? Oh, there's thousands of people living the Shankill Road. And it's, it's, it's a 100% loyalist area. Indeed, it's the heart of loyalism in Ulster and that, that's where I was from and that's where our stamping ground was and that's where our unit of the Ulster Freedom Fighters came from. How many people were in your unit, Johnny? Well, there was there was thousands of people in the UDA in the province in the Ulster Defence Association and that, that organisation was legal at the start until 1991, I think it was, when it was banned by the Secretary of State and then it became illegal to be a member of that organisation. Uh, I went on, I, I was sentenced for both membership of the UDA and the UFF, and uh, I became a leader of both. And that uh, that involved in uh, in control of hundreds and thousands of men. 
uh, in that area, West Belfast. When did you first get to jail? I've been to jail on numerous occasions um, for numerous offences like guns, bombs, membership, directing terrorism, hijacking. And just uh, I think the first time would have been when I was a late teenager. Mm -hmm. They've been hijacking a bus or something. Because I think for people looking at the outside, we spoke about it earlier, it seems fucking crazy to, to look back and all that, but people need to understand when you grew up in that environment, it becomes yeah. the norm. Well, when you look back on it now, thankfully, I'm glad that there's peace over there now, but it, regrettably, that, that didn't come in 1969 when the troubles just kicked off. I just regret the fact that the politicians couldn't have done in 1969 what they'd done some years ago to bring about the, the Good Friday Agreement. And... It's a sin because almost four people, four thousand people, has lost their lives. Both sides, Protestants, Catholics, police and soldiers, prison officers, mm -hmm. and uh, but there's peace there now, and 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 hopefully it continues. That is a lot of lives then to loss, and I always say everything has a ripple effect. It's not yep. just the people who've yep. lost a life; it's this the, the everyone surrounding it, family members, court cases. But again, that was the involvement that you were involved in. When did you get? The, when did you get, is it 16 years you got or was it life you got? I got 16 years for uh -huh. directing terrorism uh -huh. and it was released early. I, when I was in prison, the, 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 the peace process, the Good Friday Agreement was signed and the, uh, part of the Good Friday Agreement that the prisoners would be released early. I was released early, but I was the first prisoner to be returned because there was a clause that you, could, you got out on the peace agreement but if you associate it with paramilitaries, mm -hmm. that you could be brought back without going in front of a court. And I had been the first prisoner to be brought, returned to prison to serve the rest of the remainder of my sentence. Is that because you were high profile? Well, on, based on intelligence, which was unfair, based on intelligence report, they, they, they leveled all sorts of accusations against me. Uh, a legend that have been involved in guns, bombs, paramilitary shootings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and I didn't have no defence. I mean, they could have said anything, and that a panel would have believed that, and that was enough to keep me to, to serve the remainder of my sentence. How did the Good Friday Agreement come about? It, it came about like lot, years and years of all yeah. build up before it. But was it ten years or something? Or yeah, 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 but uh, but there was years and years in in the making. I mean, church leaders and community leaders and just it was a long long process a process that, that had to come because it was just it was going nowhere the conflict how long did you serve was it three years when you were doing your 16 sentence no i, I served with being brought back to, to serve the remainder out of my 16 years I, I was released for about nine months right and then returned to prison so i spent i done worse out of the good Friday agreement because i spent almost 12 years out of a 16 year sentence Fuck's sake. It was spent uh, between the, the Crumlin Road prison and the Mays prison. How was the Mays prison? Because I've, I've read a Mays lot of prison stories. was because we were political prisoners. Mm -hmm. right? We could wear our own clothes and we could control the jail. To a certain, well, not the jail, but our wings to a certain degree. We commanded the the, the, the wings and the, the screws just, they were out in a circle. They just done head counts, mm -hmm. etc. We, we, the Mays prison was, was a... Was a it was brilliant. It was that like a party, was it? No. I mean, when you go to prison, like the the, the, the key objective is taking your freedom. Mm -hmm. And although we were in the maze and times were good and we're all comrades, we, we all had great times together. But I mean, your freedom was taken from you, and that was the important thing. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go home at night if you wanted to. You were. What's so, the story with the guy with the wooden leg? Oh, that was the guy that you used to break because we could we would smuggled anything into the maze <laughs> prison. In fact, I tried this. I got a. Uh, uh, a visitor, a friend of mine, to try and smuggle me a, a dog in, a pup, because I knew, because it, it was just, they had budgies, that the, the, the authorities was allowed us to have budgies, right? So I decided that I would like a wee pup, and I knew if we got a pup in there, the screws weren't getting it out, because we controlled them wings. So the pup, I sent word outside, and, and a friend of mine got this wee pup, and he drugged it so as it would be sleeping, on, on, right? So the guy, he tracks out bottoms, and he comes in to visit me, and Obviously, you get search coming in the maze. So the wee dog was out, cold, down his tracksuit bottoms. But when he was in the search, getting searched, <laughs> the wee dog came alive. <laughs> <laughs> the screws locked it down and seen it. Just pulled his trip, <clears throat> got the dog and just laughed and put him out. But I never got the wee dog in. But the guy with the one leg, he had an artificial leg. And uh, we were on steroids and all at the time. And we, 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 ate, we, had, we got the steaks and all smuggled in from the outside. So he would come in every Monday and anything that we want, any contraband that we wanted, well, me and whoever was part of it, we he would have just put it all in his, his 
his wooden leg and come in on the Monday and they didn't search that, they didn't take that leg off and he would have just come in and just took out all the contraband, Never whatever done. we wanted. Anything, I could have got, we could have got anything in there. Fuck's Almost yeah. anything. Because I've read the parties that used to have in there, the women, the uh, drugs, uh, well, the drink. <laughs> it was, it was. Was it really a sentence? Uh, well, not really. Well, again, your freedom was taken from of course, me. But, but the way we were, like, it was all comrades, you mean, and everybody was there for each other. You became a family then. You lost your family on the outside, but when you became in the prison, you, you, you gained another family. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were your comrades, but they were as close, if not closer than family. Did you know the majority of the people? Did you know everybody? Or did Every you... single one of them. I, I, I was their leader. M most mm -hmm. of the ones in my, uh, what I commanded, they were all my comrades. That's crazy, and, and and it was it was great. It was great, but it's like everything. You you, you sad times because prison can be a rough time. You know, family problems, and most 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 prisoners do have, and um, most prisoners had children and and wives and parents, and it was hard on them. And, but we tried to make it the best that we could for us. Mm -hmm. And yes, we did. We had discos, and the prison authorities supplied the 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 and obviously everything, we made drink, we smuggled drink in, because you could get, we could smuggle anything into the maze. So it wasn't hooch we were making. And you said he, wo women in as well? We, well, women would have came to the visits and we instructed the screws that, 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 that increased, because our visit area was like cubicles, but it was head height, so the crew, the screw in the box could see you. But we said, look, we want that, we want more privacy. So the screws up legs and they the built it up higher. So girls would have come in and once you were in that cubicle you could have done anything and before when your time was up for a visit the screw knew what you were doing so he wouldn't walk down but he would shout down five minutes so what i was basically saying was get your clothes uh, on now uh, you, you have five minutes to uh, go ready to go and but how it, long was the maze prison running for for years and years and years and it's, it's just closed but well, well, after the good friday it's a tourist attraction now it is uh, that's where the 10 hunger strikers died professional mm -hmm. ira so do you think died. if you grew up a few hundred metres down the road, you'd have been fighting for a different cause. Absolutely. If, if I'd have been a Catholic, I'd have probably no, mo, mo, most definitely joined the, the professional IRA because that's what it was over there. If you were born up, born in the communities like the Shangle or the Falls, 99% of the, the people in that community supported the, either the Loyalists or the Republican movement or uh, uh, went on to enjoy uh, uh, join that movements. So how and, did, for being a leader of your, being a leader of the UDA, Yep. How did it all come crashing down? How did everybody start fighting? How did... Well, once it, a good Friday, but in my opinion, once a good, the peace process came and most of the prisoners were let out of jail, there was no more common enemy. So see, within loyalism, you had different groupings. You had the Ulster Volunteer Force and you had the UDA, which they were fighting for the same cause, but they didn't get on with each other. Mm -hmm. So when you've no common enemy to fight with the IRA, so it was inevitable that they just ended up fighting with one another. And that's sadly, that's what happened. But that's crazy. It, it is crazy. It is crazy. Because for all them years, you were fighting the, the, the one objective, which was the, the Republican movement. And then when there's peace, there's no more, Rep the Republicans aren't doing them to your, your community or your country. So you can't fight with them. So it, 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 the, the sad fact happened was that the, Is the that still happening just now? It's still, yes, it's still festers, it's still fester in a way, and it will always be the case, because you've, you've, you've groups of men who, they've no real reason to be there, but they're still there. Like, we're, we're 20 odd years into the, and, and the peace, and, and paramilitaries are still in existence, and they shouldn't really be there, because there's no real threat from, from anyone. There's dissident Republicans, but they're in a, a small, small minority, and the, all they're doing is, is policing their own areas, with like, like, dishing out punishment beatings on their own people but there's no real uh, threat of bombing to the country or Protestants or loyalists being murdered by them. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, in my opinion, there's no no reason for paramilitaries of, of all stature to be to be in place mm -hmm. whatsoever. Are you still in contact with anybody, any road trips? Yep, I am indeed. I lots of my comrades and lots of my friends and my family. Yes, in contact every, on a daily basis. You'll still be well connected, Johnny. You're not going to be. Oh, that I'm still life. passionate. I'm still a loyalist, yeah. and I've no regrets about my past. And 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 and, and I mean, I, I served a permit that the society. I served 16 years in prison for 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 for, for my offences, and I, I'm passionate still about politics back home in Northern Ireland, and uh, I'm still uh, have my ear to the ground. Do you miss it, Johnny? Well, I miss it in the sense that, well, not really because there's peace there now. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that there's no real reason for me to be there now. And when I'm living here in Scotland, maybe all this was for a reason, because now I have a normal life, mm -hmm. a normal life to do the things that I couldn't do when I was back home in, in Belfast. 
and 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 for, for, for in that aspect of it all, yeah, I'm I'm happy now in life, mm. and I, if there. I don't have to live the life that I did live over Was that the main objective, to get peace between the Catholics and Protestants, or was it became a stage where it felt normal just to, to fight? Because well, of the, you're the absolutely right. Because of the fight yes, of violence? Because it was, it was enshrined in the people. Uh -huh. And even now, you still have teenagers clashing because uh, I tune into the news every day and then they're just going to the parks and they're raging fights through social media. And it's still a sectarian thing. And it will still take years and years to get rid of that mindset. I don't think it will ever go, Johnny, it because it happens you're, in Glasgow. You're it happens absolutely everywhere right. in the world. I wouldn't you're, just you're point the finger. Right. It's, it's, it's everywhere. You're absolutely Gang right. Fighting. But the, 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 the good thing about back home and and, and Belfast is that they're not murdering each other. They're not killing each other. And the hatred is not... And, and Belfast has came a long, long way since the Good Friday Agreement, whereas Catholics and Protestants now... Like never before, they're, they're, they're working together, they're, they're, they're friendly together, they're actually mar getting married and all. Things like that would never have happened in our time when the conflict was going on. I mean, you couldn't have married a Catholic or vice versa. Uh -huh. You couldn't have worked anywhere near a Catholic. Uh -huh. and, and that is crazy, though. It was crazy. It was really, really crazy. And it was always, sad. Yeah, I always believe human beings were all connected and yep. religion, race, you see, is what, dividing people. What, see, when I came to Scotland, I didn't realise that was in Belfast, remember, we didn't see Catholics. Only when I was a kid, I ran about with them until all the, the, the troubles broke out in 1969. So we were all completely segregated. We didn't, we never, we, we just heard about the IRA on the news, they killed the policeman, they killed the soldier or whatever. We never seen Catholics, right? But when I came to Scotland, I realised that what was this all about? I'll give you an example. I would have went into the boogies and there would have been a guy with a Celtic t-shirt, right? And naturally, my stomach was turning. I'd been standing beside him. Didn't say nothing, but naturally within me, I was, fuck, that's the way I was feeling about him. But through time, I, 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 I realised that people about me and people living beside me and next door were Catholics, mm -hmm. but it didn't mean nothing to them the way it did to us back home in Northern Ireland. So it took a long, long time for me to realise that this, this, there's no difference here. Mm -hmm. why, did, why did we have to behave the way we did mm -hmm. in, in, in Northern Ireland and the people in, in Scotland? Are no difference the Protestants and the Catholics. Mm -hmm. They're the same. It's they're a Catholic and we're, we're Protestant, but they don't hate or kill mm -hmm. the way that was happening back home. So it took a long, long time for me to accept that a guy with a Rangers mm -hmm. t-shirt, he's no threat mm -hmm. and he's no difference from me and you. Mm -hmm. Stick a pin him and he stick a pin him and pin him, pin in him, and he'd bleed the way I will. Mm -hmm. But uh, it took a long time. But Belfast was. But that's to condition the mind through the violence. Exactly. If you're exactly. Your mom's and that's getting burnt down or something. Yep, you're going to hate, yep. and it's crazy to hate. A certain colour yep. or a certain religion, yep. but yep. again, it's being conditioned. And that, that hatred was uh, hatred just became worse through the years, throughout the years, because of what the IRA was doing to our country and to our people. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, over here, you don't turn the news on every day and hear that someone's been shot dead. It's it's rare, not mm. really rare, but it's whereas in Belfast, you'd have turned the news on, maybe it would have been happened once a day, twice a day, three times a day, every day, mm -hmm. or a bomb, and it was it was against. The, the, the loyalist people or the or the or, or, or vice versa. So if you were in, if you were in Belfast and you seen somebody with a Celtic top on, the difference is see in Belfast at that time uh -huh. if someone was in the shangle with a, a Celtic t shirt and I'm being totally honest here he'd be beat to death. That's 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 a sad reality. Mm -hmm. Then way back then in the times, whereas and that's how I felt the way I felt when the first time I stood beside someone mm -hmm. I was feeling that hatred and that. Anger. Aggression and anger, but, that, but that's but, just a normal occurrence because well, you conditioned your mind. To that, think well, that my way. mind's been conditioned mm -hmm. now that I realised like that that was crazy. What was going mm -hmm. on over there? There was real no need for it, and uh, well, that mindset well, uh, it's not going to change overnight mm -hmm. back home. It's going to take years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. But they will get there hopefully. Would you ever speak to some of the comrades and some of the troops and and, and try and discuss it the way you're talking now to say? What is it you're fighting for, and what is it? Is it no, is well, it, well, what's the point of it? And well, well more the, to life? No, no, I would be a hypocrite if I was to say that now, because at the time, and even now, I have no regrets about what I was doing. So I could not sit till comrades now and say, "Look, that was wrong." Do you understand mm -hmm. what I mean? Because at the time, it was right. We felt that that the government and the police weren't defending us, and uh, we were going to lose our country till the, the, the free state if we didn't stand up. So the government was doing enough, so we took the law in their own hands and we we, we, we challenged the IRA. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't say to volunteers, nah, that was wrong. But at the time, it was right. Mm -hmm. So I have no regrets. And I would, would not try to say, look, that was wrong. The good thing is there's a peace 
peace agreement there now, and they've all signed up to it, and so far so good. And there's not the lives being lost at war 20 odd years ago. Which is the main thing. Which is the important thing. Do you thing. think it could kick off again? I don't think so. I think uh, the powers that be are in, uh, totally in control of it. I think the powers that, that be were in control, uh, in, in terms of paramilitaries like professional IRA and distant Republicans and loyalists, I think that, 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 that the intelligence services are on top of it. So I don't think they would let that spread the way it did. Is there still the a strong, strong units between the UDA, UVF, Catholic well, IRA is a, is a, is a, is a, is a strong there is a stronger force of the. Can well, uh, they're still there. That then, mm -hmm. although we, weapons have been de decommissioned, that was part of the Good Friday Agreement, where weapons would be decommissioned. Now, the dogs in the street know that not all weapons have been decommissioned. Mm -hmm. Some weapons were decommissioned, but there's no doubt in my mind that both loyalists and Republicans would have kept the weapons in case further down the line that, that, that the troubles all start up mm -hmm. again. They're not going to lay themselves defenceless. So a loyalist, Johnny, what is a loyalist to you then? A Protestant. Uh -huh. Protestant. Um, someone who came, who would, uh, more, more, more so like uh, paramilitaries, who would have fought for what they believed in and sacrificed their freedom. And sadly, mostly, some of them give up their lives mm -hmm. for the, their for the loyalist for cause. The, for the fight? Yep. So basically die for the cause if, Absolutely. if needed be? Absolutely. Which is fucking scary, isn't it? It is scary, but when you have to when you when you look at the, the, the ten hunger strikers and I grudgingly respect them mm -hmm. because they were my enemies, them men give their lives for, for, for their political beliefs. Mm -hmm. That was a hard thing to do. Ten men staring death in the face for sixty days or something or sixty odd days. For freedom. Soldiers, yep, mm -hmm. for freedom. That's that takes a lot of bottom. You've got to take Absolutely. your heart off to anybody that does uh, yeah, that. Take, I grudgingly respect them. To and give your life. I would never mock them. I would uh -huh. never let anyone mock them mm -hmm. because what they done was that they sacrificed it all for their mm -hmm. cause. Do you have a, how is your mindset? How do you, do you get nightmares, Johnny? Do you get... No, no, no. Nothing? No, no. Mm -hmm. You just well, kind of used to it. You became cold just, to it. Well, I, I just... At the end of the day, I believed in what I was doing was justified mm -hmm. in the defence of our people. So I, I, I don't live to regret it. I don't have sleepless nights. So yeah. I don't. There's always talk about you having hits out in your life and people want to kill you, but I think you've probably been used to that since you were 18. Well, along my journey, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've been on the receiving end of the gun on, on many of times. I mean, there's been multiple attempts to kill me through ways of bombs, bullets, poison. Just, uh, just, but I've just came immune to it. And even, as re uh, even in Scotland, as recent as three years ago, there was several people who were sentenced to long prison sentence for conspiracy, conspiring to murder me, myself and my friend. And this turns out that, that these boys were under surveillance from the MI5 for some 14 months. And they'd, they'd seized an assault rifle and, and the plot, the recordings of them doing dummy runs, wanting to kill me. But I, I just think that these people were loosely connected to the, to the just small time criminals who were using the Republican flag, flag of to, to try and ex extract money from drug dealers in Glasgow. And this is the case. Mm -hmm. And some of the drug dealers were, were a, a, a actually as frightened of this, these people who were pretending to be Republicans and were going to fight and kill Johnny Adair. So I, what, what do you hear, Johnny, when somebody's trying to kill you? How do you react? Do you... Well, go back to that incident. I was in Spain, right? And I had just came back. But a week prior to that, I was flying into this Presswick airport and the I was pu pulled into the room. You know, and that was that used to be normal for me back home. But in times of peace and times of now when I'm living a normal life, that never happened. So I accepted it the first time. So I was away a week a week later. I accepted it. He said, "Look, new laws have come in, terrorism laws, blah blah blah." So hands up, yes. But a week later, I flew in from the country again, and it was the same one. Pulled me out of a crowd of hundreds of people. Pulled me in the room. So I believe that this is the police. Starting, starting to harass me again. So I was angry. He said, you need to come into the room. I said, into the fucking room. So I went in the room and I kicked the fucking the chair. And, <laughs> but there was two special branch men sitting there, policemen, right? Well, he said they were special branch. So I kicked the chair and started shouting at them, calling them black bastards. That's harassment. No, 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 no. You've got it all wrong, Johnny. Have you heard the news? I says, no. And they were there to tell me that people was appearing and people was about to be charged with conspiring to murder me. And I thought it was a form of harassment. And I was, I kicked the chair and all of them. Mm. You fucking black bastard. I was calling them. But they were right. And they were just... 
bringing me in the, the, the to warn me that, 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 that mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but I, I, I seen it wrong but I if you got that impression were the police because of, even no. though you've got to understand they're still doing their job well absolutely and I, the way I look at it if you're doing if you're doing wrong the police will be on your case mm -hmm. I'm not doing wrong so they're not on my case right maybe at the start they had me on their surveillance and the, the, because of the person the personality I was they needed to stamp their authority and they did they busted my house the armed response all that shit a few times but I just told them to behave themselves because someone like me with, with, with a, uh, a personality like myself there's no way I was going to have anything illegal in my house nor would I anyway but Did you ever be worried Johnny that you were going to get set up plant a gun plant drugs I can hear stories but I don't believe maybe in Belfast things like that would happen but I don't know it probably would happen it was be always in the back of your mind yep it would I when you first moved to Scotland how were you treated great brilliant uh, as I say at the start at the at the early months I did, I did the, the police would have let me know that they were there you know what I mean they had me just under their feelings that they followed me drink driving they lost my license they busted my house several occasions it all took money from me which I got back things like that but they were just I think they were expecting me to be this person who's going to do all these crazy things, but it didn't. But obviously their job was to keep tags on them. Mm -hmm. Do you think if, obviously you've, you've wanted to come out, you've came to Scotland, you want a better life for yourself, yep. which is difficult, but do you think you've still got that tag where you you always be looked at as Johnny Mad Absolutely, and that, that's going to stay with me till the day I die. But I mean, there's, there's nothing I can do about that. I was that person, and I chose to be that person. And I, I've i got big, big enough shoulders to accept what comes with that, either good or bad. Mm -hmm. And I've had that most of my life. And ways enough to realise in life you have to take the rough with the smooth. Things will be good in my life, things will be bad, I accept them. And I'm different from most people because of, I'm, I'm a big personality. I'm, I'm in the public domain more than most people. So people will like me. People will love me. People people will hate me. And that's just something that that's I... That's just a non-man life. No matter exactly, what it is you do, exactly. no matter where, what you're involved exactly. in, people love you, people hate yep. you. It's just about taking it in the chin. When you, you've had a few hits in your life, yep. you get shot in the head yep. at a UB40 yep. concert. Yep. How was that feeling? I was feeling... I was in a time of peace too. And I had been just released on parole, my first parole. And my wife then got me these tickets to go and see UB40 because I loved UB40. Mm -hmm. And because of the conflict, bands like UB40 wouldn't come to Belfast. We didn't get the likes of that because it was a dangerous place to come. But now I'm peace. So she's heard me up brilliant. They were playing in Belfast. Happy days. So get the tickets were going that night. And because there was peace, I thought, well, there's peace. That means there's no more war. But the, my men around me were saying, you can't go up there, John. I'm making sure there's peace. We'll be all right. It's a lovely summer's night. Open our concert. Me and the wife will go, I'm oh, no, Johnny, you need the menders. I mean, I don't need menders. So he goes up and it was a great night. And the next thing, bang, I got shot point blank range in the back of the head. Not only got shot, one of the fought with me after it. But the grace of God, I, I lived, I survived it. Obviously, it must have been a dump round. I seen the round, it was crazy and it was a big lead slug. But obviously, it must have been a damp round when there must have not been enough gunpowder in it. Because had it been a, a newish round, it would have just blew my brains completely off. I wouldn't have. But it just went into my head and travelled and, and, and lodged there. So, and I was, I was only out in parole and we went, we phoned the jail and told them they couldn't go back. They couldn't believe that he'd be shot in the head. And they, Johnny, you're at your work now. Come on now. You, we're, I mean, look, I've been shot in the head. I have to go to the hospital and we're going to take the bullet out. But the, people couldn't believe how could you get shot in the head and walk away from it. But I did. So the I person did. that shot you in the head, you were, fight, you were still fighting with the them? Story, no, no. They fought with me. See, when they shot me in the head, when mm -hmm. I went down, I thought it was a grenade with a big flash. And then I, I just, the way you see in a film, you know, like you, you're shot, you stagger about and all. And I knew. I mean, well, I'm not dead, but I, I, everything was going through my head. I could just see my wife in slow motion. And the next thing, I, I remember fighting with them, right? And and they tried to get me down. And I remember, the grace of God, I got away anyway. And uh, ironically, when I got the, the car that, that, that got me to my safety, was, it turns out that because I knew through police taking steam as long as taxis were, but he was a Catholic. And Saved when I life. when I got like, oh, I. <laughs> But I get into the car, you know who I am. And he's, oh, the mom was panicking. I said, hospital. And then I realized, no, don't go to the hospital because if they think you're alive, they realize you're alive, they could come back to the hospital and finish you off. So I told him to go to Shangle. And he was panicking. 
but he took me to Shango. Oh, he must have been shit. He was, no. And I never realised he was a Catholic until after the police had told me, he said, Johnny, you'll never believe this, but see that guy that saved your life, the, the, the guy in the white car? He said he was, he was a Catholic. I mean, oh, fuck. That Does God. that not make you realise, though, Johnny, and goes, just, you know what? It is all kind of madness. And, and but the that. story goes, you see that, 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 this is what I hear. Because I, I mean, you hear stories and, and then when they returned me to prison, put me in a segregated jail, you know, Catholics and Protestants. And that was the first time that I was in amongst Catholics. It was hard because they, I was the devil to them. And, but some of them became good friends of mine. And they told me things, you know what I mean, which was important. And one of the, the stories they told me was this, this guy had shot me. Now, he wasn't a Republican. He was an opportunist, right? And it turns out he was, he was heavy on the coke. They spotted me there, Johnny, out there. I'm almost shoot him. So obviously they got the gun, they done what they had to do. But this guy threw the paper down to me one day, the Anderson's Town News. He was a Catholic guy in the jail. He says, who's your mate? And I looked at it, it was a death thing. The guy had been dead a year. I said, who? I didn't know who shot me. And I hadn't a clue who it was. The police didn't know at that time because they thought it was main, mainstream Republicans. Have a mask on? So, no, 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 bare-faced. So uh, the guy threw the thing down, but this guy had been dead a year. But it was the actual, it turns out it was the actual guy that, that shot me. But he was flat out in a coke and he got paranoid. And he moved to Dublin. He thought that we were coming after him and we were closing in on him. He hung himself, left a suicide note. Johnny Adorno's men's closing in on me. I can't live with this anymore. And he fucking hung himself. I didn't even know who he was. And he thought that I, that, that I knew who he was and we were coming close. Flat out in coke, hung himself. Did you think that was a sort of just a wee thing? Right. To it? No, you put them yep, on yep, 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 the yep. table. Um, did you think that was a. A, a, a hit then a, a professional hit and you just kind of at the time yes everybody did do. everybody did yep the police and all was because no mask and, no nothing and even at the time uh, the people associated the loyalists who was who, who'd be loyal to me they were actually going out and retaliating within hours and days oh. after I think there was so Catholics were getting killed well just because there was shootings he fought and yes because they thought that that, that that was Republicans and I think messages was sent through our political parties that it was nothing to do with the IRA or uh, mainstream Republicans. That's nuts. That is. Uh. Do you remember what UB40 song it was? Oh, it was a horrible song. Too. It was a <laughs> fucking song. <laughs> what, 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 one of the very few UB40 songs, I fucking, I hate it. And it, it was the first time I heard it. It was about a train. And I remember, it, I remember even saying, I was like, I, don't, I don't like that song. You don't thing, fucking bang. like it anymore. And that song's fucking uh -huh. stuck with me. Because I think the I train is coming or something. <laughs> Fuck that. Your train was nearly there, Johnny. Uh -huh. Is um, I think you've had a lot of hits in your life as well, but a lot of these people aren't breathing anymore either. I know, I know. Well, that's the way it goes. This is it, uh, is that retaliation? Is that no? It's not. Just, that I don't know. It's, it's some some of the people I knew that tried to kill me have been sent to prison. Some of the people in the process of trying to kill me actually killed themselves with bombs, uh, and just uh, and, and others. I think I don't know. People's just took the, took the law into their own hands, sort of speaking. I can't believe the guy who shot you. I thought it was a hat. And I never, no, no, never, no, never no. Never it was just that. an opportunity. We're Catholics, like. Mm -hmm. And here was Johnny at there, stuck with no menders, just with his wife, and, and an open-air concert, more or less in their turf. And there was a big crowd of them. And ironically, another one, the main instigator who was fighting that night, who was a, he was a, an amateur an amateur heavyweight boxer, he was one of the aggressors, right? But ironically, he was shot dead some, some years later. Two guys walked into a bar with false beards and shot him dead. Nothing to do with me or nothing to do with the loyalist movement. But that, that's what happened to him. His so the fate. two men who were there that night are dead? Two, two men, the instigator was shot dead by, uh, obviously it must have been his own people. But he was shot dead and the other guy hung himself. See the people who are surrounded by you? Obviously it was in your home turf. Yep. Did, was there no retaliation to, to fucking try and give them it or try and or did everybody kind of shot it and heard, heard not bullets and just ran? No, that was, that's what I'm saying. Seeing the days after I got shot, uh -huh. there was retaliation. Uh -huh. But I'm talking the, about the present moment when you get shot in the head. When, when I got shot in the head, there was no, not within within ours, but within with, with the next day there was retaliation and the day after there was retaliation. Nothing to do with me, like, but... Why did you drop your guard that night? Because I, I felt because because I was in jail for many many years, and I was I was supporting the, the, the peace process, and I was instrumental in bringing my people along. Did they agree with the peace? I thought that times have changed now. There's no more guns. There's no more bullets. There's no more bombs. We can live maybe not beside each other, but we can at least I can go to a concert without my minders or my body armor on. Mm -hmm. But I got that one wrong. Did that keep you on your toes to this day? Well, see, see to be honest. See the way I looked on it. See, no matter what, 
security measures you take. I did take security measures, but what's for you will not go by you. And I used to wear body armor all the time until I got shot in the head. And then I realized, fuck, I don't need that anymore because they'll, 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 they'll shoot you in the head. <laughs> so stop worrying that. But no, I did take security measures, but I was never one that f was fr frightened to death. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I didn't fear at death because if I did, I, I, my head would have went a long, long time ago because there's been multiple attacks on me, attempts to kill me. And you think we're at life? We spoke earlier. I says, are you paranoid? And he says, no. No, I, I, I'm thank God. I, 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 you couldn't, for to be the person that I was and the position that I was, you, you, you couldn't afford it to be paranoid because my, my, the men below me relied on me and I relied on the men below them. So I had to be 100% upstairs. How many uh, friends have you got left, Johnny, that you grew up with and uh, that are not dead or you fell out with? Or? Well, you see, in life, and in, in my job, I had to have, I had to put my trust in, in lots and lots of people. But it, it turns out that it, it's very, very hard in this life to trust. I don't believe that you could fail. I, it's hard to trust anyone, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. Trust yourself and you'll not go wrong. Uh -huh. That is, I, I believe that it's hard to trust anybody, no matter who it is. It's, yep. we live because in that, ev everybody has, people, pe people can be disloyal, people can have breaking points, people can be jealous. And there's a combination of things that makes, makes think people not be hmm. loyal or friendly or trustworthy. And all these come, come into account. But I've learned in life to trust no one, only yourself. Uh -huh. In that way. Obviously, the Catholics and Celtic, uh, Catholics and... Protestants here is, is in Glasgow is mostly Celtic and Rangers. Yeah. How strong is it in Belfast and Dublin with Celtic and Rangers? Is it as strong it's as people exact, make it? Yes, exactly the same here. Do you yeah. go to the Rangers exactly. games? No, anything? I don't go to the games. No, no. It's exactly the same. Boys over here is more passionate and they're not as aggressive, whereas the boys, the Celtic and the Rangers people in Belfast would kill each other after an old firm game. That's never happened, but they would mm. if, if, they, if they had the chance, if they were that close. Whereas at a Rangers and Celtic game, the, the Celtic guys, after the game, they could be walking up one side of the street with a Rangers uh, Celtic scarf and a Rangers man could be walking beside him. I mean, that that that, that would happen. That wouldn't happen back home. Uh -huh. One of them would be choked to death. It's fucking <laughs> it's crazy. Or right. shot. Oh, it is crazy. It was. It's just that's the way it was. I think it was the... The conflict that made the the, the 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 people so aggressive on both sides. We're not mm -hmm. talking about a handful of people here. We're talking about thousands of people because thousands of people were affected by that conflict. Thousands of men went through them jails, both loyalists and republicans. So when you're brought up in an environment with guns, bombs, blood and guts, obviously it'll affect you and it'll make you a hard heart mentally, if not physically, mm -hmm. a hard person or a tough person. A lot of people who go through that kind of life who see murders, who see crime, who see violence, they tend to hit drugs, they tend to hit drink because they can't take the, the pain and the misery of the, the conscience frame yep. of mind where they get memories, they get bad yep. dreams. For yourself, you've kind of stayed on the path. You, we spoke earlier, yeah, you still because, train. See, the, the advantage we had over back home, we, there was never really a drug culture. And I didn't really realise how important drugs were to people's lives until I came to Scotland. It was the normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. Girls done it, guys done it. In Belfast, we did not tolerate that. It maybe happens now, but times have changed over there now. But you're right what you're saying. Uh, probably if, that, if, if drugs would have been in uh, uh, on the go over there at the time, sh oh, I, people would have turned up because everybody was affected by the troubles. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, remember, I remember myself even going to school one day and uh, a dead body b b b b mutilated stops 80 times or something. Just dumped in a wee shot, and we seen this as a kid, a dead body, the the tape around it, the police coming, and but you seen them things on a, on a, on a, on a normal basis over there. Do you have you ever spoke to a psychologist or anybody no, about the mindset? No, or no. you just trained yourself no. to be. I don't cut think it out. I, I never need, I ever needed to. I what mean, about your emotions or that, Johnny? If you you see like things like that when you're younger, do you cry? Do you get upset? Do you? Or do you just well, become it, it, immune it, it, to it? it, 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 it your, your brain is like a camera, isn't it? No mm. matter what you see, you, you'll, you'll take a mental note of it. And no matter what you see or do in life, it, it, it stays with you for the rest of your life. Now, how you deal with that is, is entirely up to yourself. Mm. I mean, I remember the late, great Billy Wright, rest in peace. I remember him, him saying this thing about taking another person's life. He turned around and said, he said, there's three things come with it. He said, the first one, which is easy, pulling the trigger, which is right. 
Because if you've got a gun on your hand, you're in charge. Nobody's going to... I could go in front of Mike Tyson with a gun. I know there's only going to be one winner. That's me. He said the second thing, he says, be prepared to get caught and go to jail for life. Could you, could you live with that? But the third and most important bit, he says, living with it for the rest of your life. And I think he was, he was absolutely right. And what, what I'm trying to get at is that's a situation where many people back home, both loyalists and Republicans, have took human beings' lives and subsequently couldn't live with it and went on to take their own life. It's like war, it's like PTSD. Exactly. It's, it's, exactly, it's exactly, what exactly what it is. What it is it's, it's exactly what it is. There's no but manual to say no. this is how to live with us because Absolutely. the strongest men have, beca- right. have also become that's the weakest right. That's right. because of the stuff they've been involved in. Everyone has a weakness. Yeah. And, and as I say, the brain, that's instilled in the brain. Mm-hmm. No matter what dastardly deed, if you want to call it, what, what people have done in life, mm-hmm. it stays with them for the rest of their life. How many? F- do you know how many funerals, funerals you've been at, Johnny? Oh, countless funerals, countless friends, comrades, countless. That's the way it was. It was funeral almost every week over there was because there much, of the conflict. Was there much in the scheme in Shankhill for, like, was there anything to keep the youth occupied what, or was it just what, to condition them to be a loyalist or... Well, it's just, the, the, they were happy times and we tried as best we could uh, as, as, as an organisation to provide for, for, the, for the kids of that community because it was, it was depraved communities where we came from but we tried to, to put on shows for them to, 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 to make them just we done whatever we could on our part to give them that little mm. bit extra in life like football pitches boxing yep, classes absolutely. stuff absolutely. like that because if you know yourself if you're bored Johnny you're going to do bad shit because yeah, it keeps absolutely. you occupied so things like flute bonds etc mm. etc that that got them together and got them away from we, we just tried our best but over in Belfast there was never a dull moment because there was always something happening the police were always raiding houses the young kids was always attacking the police vehicles it was burning cars it was just always mm-hmm. you walk around the corner the place would have been ta- taped off somebody's been shot dead mm-hmm. that's the way it was it was just like a film set year in and year out for, the, for, for 20 odd years 30 years when you were in Shankill obviously they had the memo- memorials on the walls yep. and stuff a lot of them are painted off does yep. that make you sad it does indeed because that that we, that was our territory and that, this is the way we we, we we sort of way let the rest of the world know who we were, we were telling them through wall murals and each different wall mural would depict a different event of history. But come the peace process, the people that's there and I, they got money off the government to erase these and lighten them up with something more like sports or something, which is probably a good thing. But to me, when we put our murals up, there were history. Maybe the ones, even the ones with the, with, with, with the hooded men and, and the armed gunmen, and all, it, it was part of history. That's what happened. And, and then and Belfast for all that, for such a long period of time. But the the Muslims are raised now and they're replaced by more, I don't know, sports or, or cartoons or Is that characters. what uh, tourists and stuff go through? Is it safe now? When I was there, that that, that where I lived, that the tourists, it was, it was massive. But you have to remember that the, the, the peace had just came there. So uh, that, 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 there, there's still uh, large numbers of tourists come over there on on. on, on year in and year out but I mean way back then it was all oh, millions came through like millions and where I lived it was just coach loads every day mm-hmm. we had even me like Chinese I remember Chinese people and all running up and all and, Johnny Johnny can I have a photograph <laughs> <laughs> and I, I <laughs> we chinks oh, it was great it was yeah. funny <laughs> But, uh, but because of who I was like I was mm-hmm. on the internet and I was globally mm-hmm. I'll give you an example when I was in jail I got letters from all over the world America, che- every corner of the world I got letters. And it actually kept me going because the last time I was in jail, they isolated me. They kept me in a prison wing for 24 months, no other prisoner, just me, me, probably torture. Tr- uh, mental, mental torture. They probably thought he'll hang himself, but they were wrong. Mm-hmm. I never had a visit for a full year. I never seen anyone for a year, only the two screws that made, came in the morning g- give me my breakfast or whatever. So is that trying to break you? Well, I believe it was, I, but it never, it never worked. How did but you? How did I get through that? Uh, I got letters from all over the world. Did they give it, you a letters? It, okay. It, oh, I, not, oh, them screws over there. They were, they, they were, because we, again, they used to be bad in the day, just like Scotland, Berlin, and everywhere else. But when once we got the maze and we started sending out a couple of wee messages to them, then they just uh-huh. we were in charge. Yeah, but screws used to be bad people. They did. And, and I could speak for all jails, England, Scotland and all. We got the same over there. Mm-hmm. Even though we were paramilitaries, 
the screws were fuckers to us, like. Because uh, a lot of people that are on the show, they speak about being in prison, and they used to get kicked fuck out of. Screw was a bar. So sorry, prison was a bad place mm -hmm. uh, back then. I can just come back when I just even in at the start. Oh, they were the war. They were, they, mm -hmm. they were, they were, they were, it was bad. But anyway, so what got me through it was, was, was the letters, because I, I, every single day I got bunches of letters, and I, and I made sure that every single letter that I got, I replied to it, because if someone could take an hour out of their time mm -hmm. and spend 30p or something for a stamp to write the, the Johnny out there, I think I owed, that, owed them that just to return it. Because mm -hmm. I went to watching a documentary, you had people from Germany that had shrines of you and I know, posters I know, I know, and I know. probably pictures up in their wall that you probably didn't even have. That's right, that's right. <laughs> That's that again. That was in jail. That was the German people, and 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 they 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 were, they were Germans. What, what I learned from them is they're real loyal, loyal people, and they just became infatuated with me, and they actually became friends with me, and uh, but uh, that's but that, that's what How happened. How does that I, make you feel? Well, to be honest with you, it made me feel good. It made me feel important. What, the job, yeah, absolutely, the job that I was doing. This is this is what people's looking up to you, and people's respecting you for doing it. So yes, it made me feel brilliant because mm -hmm. obviously. The Germans and they watch your stuff and the the big guy was saying that it would if anything happens to you he's going to bring his team and kill oh. them and he himself he was in prison for for planting a bomb under somebody's car or something but I think he's reformed now Nick but they were good guys all them Germans do you still in contact with them I haven't spoke to him in about six months maybe a wee mm. bit longer but that that's the type of the, 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 all people from from all walks of life used to write to me obviously because it was in the public domain so much because it's a sense of power as well if you've got somebody at the forefront who's willing to die for you that must give you some amount of power johnny well, i when she even we old age pensioners sending you in five pound do you know how that made me feel not that i needed it mm -hmm. but if we old age pensioner because you're stuck in jail sending you five pound now probably that's all the wee woman had but to send me who was johnny at there five pound and supporting me i mean that made me feel really and all sorts of support and all sorts of and it was evident in the mail i got it was just from all over the world from all walks of life how was it when you came out that when you came out of belfast you came into scotland and you did the documentary what was the reaction then for you to have been that active to then do a documentary was well, anybody trying to put the blockers or anything on my, it? my plans my plans was to return to belfast when i was released from prison and go and seek out the instigators who had done what they'd done on me and my friends. So what they'd done, before I could set foot in Belfast, they pulled me out of the jail two days early, put me on an army helicopter and flew me to Manchester. They got me to Manchester, they read me the Red Act, which they thought was, do not go back to Belfast, right, no, no problems. The next day I was in Belfast and at one of the instigators door, wrapped his door, because I was wanting answers, I was wanting to confront these people mm -hmm. for, for, for what they'd done, but I wanted to do it on a one-to-one -to -one basis, because I knew I, I could stand up to anybody, man to man, but when you're standing up against 10 people or 15 people, you, 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 you're you, dead. You don't, yeah, exactly. So I went the next day, against all odds, and I went to uh, one of these person's stores, I was going to start from the, the top, and went to his door, and he wouldn't come out. That was it? That was it. Because you're well known, you're very well known, you know that yourself, for being in a life, and, and to be, I don't like to glorify anybody, no. but to come through a life yep. that you've done and, and change your life as well, that takes mass respect for anybody yep. to do, yep. because it's difficult, but when people look up to you, and, yep. and you're well known yep. all around the world, it's, yep. the Catholic and Protestant thing is massive, mm. it's not just mm. Belfast, Dublin, Scotland, it's everywhere, do you still get, obviously in Scotland now, how do people treat you here? Well, the loyalists would love me, Mm -hmm. The majority of the lawyers would love me, right? But even right through it, I'll give you an example. Just a couple of weeks ago, a guy traveled all the way from Yorkshire, a respectable man, right? All the way from Yorkshire, just to have his photo taken with me and to shake my hand. And he drove, what, four, four, 400 miles or something from Yorkshire, just to come down to Scotland and get a photo taken with me and to shake my hand. And that, that makes me feel good. And that makes me, but it makes these people, obviously makes them feel better because I've met Johnny out there and I've shook his hand. So yes, that makes me feel that there's people out there who think, I, I, I designed the books and I designed the books mm -hmm. for him. That makes me feel that yes, people still, rightly or wrongly, respect and adore what I've done or respect. I think it's more to do with this man stood up to the IRA. Mm -hmm. Like 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 most people should be frightened of the IRA because the IRA just caused death and destruction all over the world have done it right but here's somebody who's prepared to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and i think that's where i got a lot of respect and that's why even to this day some people like like i've explained a man driving from york to, 
just have. Do you, if anybody, see if you ever had grievances with anybody just now, would it only be one phone call away for you to, to sort things out to this well, day? See, 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 to be honest, see any problems that I would have, I'm never, I, I would kind of want to deal with it myself. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that way I could get the satisfaction what I want and, 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 and do what I believe is deserved for whatever that, that, that has happened. Because obviously if you get older as well, Johnny, does it, do you think to yourself, right, I want a better life, which you're, you're trying to create, oh. but do you still miss the violence? Do you miss the craziness? Do you miss no, the well, well, not giving a fuck what I was doing, uh, What I was doing then, I believe that, 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 that was the time when the conflict was going on, so uh, I believe that I was an important part of it. But it's no longer it's ex- exists now, so I don't need to be a part of it. So in my everyday life, normal life now, I, I don't, I don't f- feel that the need to be the person that I was because I'm not engaging with the enemy. Mm-hmm. I don't have an enemy now. I have enemy, but they're nowhere near me. They're, I, I don't believe they're coming near me. Do I have problems with people? Any problem that I do have, uh, you're, you're absolutely right what you're saying about as you get older. As you get older, first and foremost, you don't want to go to jail because you've done enough years in jail. Mm-hmm. And f- you realise that the, the, the important things in life, like freedom, freedom is very important. When you're young, you don't care. 16 years, happy days, it's for the cause. But you reflect back on that now, there's years wasted. And then you think forward, do I want to go to jail? And you're absolutely right. You would be more smarter if you were to do something now than you would have been maybe 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of... And it's the fear of going to jail mm-hmm. that, that would make but you... But then that... you probably never had fear of going to jail because if you're in the maze and you're getting stakes in through wooden I legs know. and dogs and parties I and know. discos, do you think that makes it easier for people to go uh, well, at the front line and no care if they did their murder? Well, uh, well I don't think it's no, so no, much as, as if you don't care, well, but I think, I if think, you know you got to prison, you know it's going to be I think an important thing. part of the conflict over there it was to be, like, like that was a badge of honour too. Oh, I was in the maze be for five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it was. That was like a barge of the honour. And that was to prove that you were involved in the conflict because mm-hmm. you served time in the maze prison. And that was for the paramilitaries. You only went there if you were IRA or loyalist, mm-hmm. UDA, UVF. Who's the maddest person you... If, listen to your stories, man. You're all fucking mad. But who's the maddest person that you go... F- He's nutcase. He's well. Uh, 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 see, see, see. For security reasons, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it on camera uh-huh. because there, uh, uh, there's a lots, lots of people who I would uh, consider to be mod. But uh, psychotic, in your term, well, in my terms, good. Mm-hmm. But in other terms, people's terms, well, he's a psychopath. But I wouldn't say their names mm-hmm. on on on. I always like to think right. everybody's got goodness in them. No matter what, right. you'll get Catholics probably watching this and going, "Bastard!" You, hey, of, you of, course, of course, of course, I love that man. I respect uh, that man. I, I could, t- I could say stories about Catholics, but I mean, people would uh, would probably lessen that 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 finding out who they, that they would be. But it, would, it made the back of the hers in the back of my neck stand like, and it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe that certain Catholics would think like this of me, I mean, but they did. Mm-hmm. And it, it was. Did you ever see the man that saved your life? Have you ever spoke to him since? No, no, no. That, have you ever thanked him? See, no, because I, I didn't know. I was just told by the police. You see, gotta remember. See over there, the Catholics hated me. I was like the devil. Tell them. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was stories that I heard from from Catholics in the jail and what, what they used to do. I mean, even their parents, the, the kids, say six, seven years of age, say are down. So I, when you want your kids in, you go out and shout, "Get in!" and they don't come in. But I remember a story telling me about the, the, the ma coming out and shouting, to, trying to get the kid in. And they were shouting, Johnny Adair's coming! And the kid turned it on. <laughs> they were, they were, they were, <laughs> but, uh, no, but it's when I went to, when I went to, when I came to Scotland and I realised that, that Catholics, are, I mean, it's not, in Belfast they were treated different and there's no difference between a Catholic in Scotland or a Catholic in Belfast, but the difference is there was the conflict that we were brought on, brought up in uh, and and sh- enshrined the hatred in both mm-hmm. the Catholic and the Protestant, and that's just the way it was. That you don't have that here. You have the old firm game, f- old firm games, and you don't think the hatred. And I'm glad it's got because remember, we lived like Scotland all them years ago in the sixties. Catholics and Protestants were friends, neighbours, until uh, the civil rights came. So Scotland, Scot- and that's what sometimes worries me. I would hate to think that Scotland could at the f- do you think it could turn into like that? Well, I hope it never would be, but that's what happened in, mm. in, in Northern Ireland. And how did that make you feel, Johnny, when that became that, get put in place when you were friends with Catholics and then 
Not, were you friends with anybody then? You, you, you realised you couldn't oh, when speak I was a to kid, them? When I was a kid, uh-huh. aye, aye. and it was just, that's not just me, but everyone, you just didn't, you, we didn't see Cavaliers. They lived in the Falls, we lived in the Shangle. The only time you, we, you seen Cavaliers, if you knew them, was if you were in Belfast City Centre, which was neutral. So when you became... And then when I became right in amongst Cavaliers, was when I was in McGabry Prison. Mm-hmm. And it was hard for me because, I mean, you're standing at one big shower, so there's six of us, five Catholics, they're all talking to each other, they're not talking to me. You know I mean? But then you did, once my personality shone through, mm-hmm. and once this myth became clear that Johnny's not this big crazy, would eat mm-hmm. the head off you and all because you're a Catholic, they realised that he's a good luck. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, some of them really became good friends with me and they liked me, although they were warned off. I mean, I can remember one one Catholic lad who was, he went out in parole and he was friendly with me in the jail and he came to the end of his sentence, he went out in parole, but the IRA had got him and they'd strung him up and they'd whipped him and they accused him of passing on intelligence to me about where IRA men all lived, which was untrue. But this poor cunt was hung up and fucking whipped. Because he was speaking to you? Because somebody in the jail said that he was passing on information to me. Which is understandable which, as well. Of course if, it was. But, but the wee guy, he wasn't passing on and I nor would I have asked him for information. <laughs> He's getting but his ass whipped. I, I got my eyes opened up in there and I realised that the Catholics, like, were, there were no difference than, than, than the Protestants. You know what Of I mean? course, no. But again, it welcomed out of that condition. I mean, you're conditioned to hate. It's like where uh, the armies, no matter what army it is, you're conditioned to go and fight see, for someone else. The way we looked at it, the IRA and the Catholic community support them, so therefore they're all one. And when the IRA has come into your community and planting the bomb and killing 10 people, you hate the IRA. And then the next day they're doing the same again. So you hate the people that support them, who's the Catholics. So that's just the way Belfast was. It was just a real, real hatred. And and, and many loyalists and republics in Scotland would understand that because they, they would be uh, fizzers to Belfast. But the, the, the wider majority of the people in Scotland don't really understand how, how vicious and how cruel it was. And if they did really know the, the full details and facts, then they, they would kind of understand a wee bit more clear. They would go, well, is that what happened? And it's well, all right for people fighting for the cause, Catholics, Protestants, but it's the innocent ones who lost their life, the kids, the families. And there was that, that, that's what happens. And when, 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 when someone's shot or blew up and all, it's, it's, you're right, it's that the entire family's affected mm-hmm. and their friends. And it just spreads like a, it's not just the one person that's affected, mm-hmm. and that then people's affected for the rest of their life, mm-hmm. and that that's that's the conflict, and that's what the cause. That that's what it was. It was it was, real, it was horrible. It must like. have been tough, as well, for anybody growing up there. And it's all right for people to say and sit and think that's crazy and this and that. But he's up. He's what in your mind? He's a fight for a cause. In your yep. mind, he's a fight for something. So it's difficult for anybody to get out of that life. Is there anybody as high profile as yourself that's got out and changed their life and? Oh, don't get me wrong. There's been cases of people that, that that's I mean turned good living. There's people that that's, that's turned their life around, walked, turned their back on paramilitaries. But it was hard. You to turn turn your back on the paramilitaries. Could paramilitaries control your life, so to speak? And if you were in at the deep end, you couldn't just leave, walk and walk and and leave the paramilitaries whenever you wanted. Even to this day, they're they're they're, they're still there, and the people can't leave it. I mean, they take a control of your life, and what they say fucking goes. Would you love to be back? No, not really, because I'm, I'm living a normal life in Scotland, mm-hmm. as I say. And, and all my years in Belfast, I never had, remotely had the, the life that I'm having in Scotland because of who I was like. It was my choice, but I couldn't do. I couldn't go to a cinema. I couldn't go to a concert. If there was a concert, well, I went oh, to a concert anymore. and got shot, mm-hmm. I know. But yeah, boxing, I love boxing, right? I couldn't watch boxing in Belfast, although it was the only sport... And, and Belfast and, and Northern Ireland that brought the two communities together. And that was the unwritten rule that, 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 that boxers from the shangle can go to the falls and vice versa. And that was a good thing. And I love boxing. And I would have loved to have went to box, boxing offence, but I couldn't have went I couldn't have went there. I remember going to a bodybuilding thing, seminar and I brought about 30 men and, and lots of them were all, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> do you think you so, missed out on a lot then? Absolutely. A, a, a and I didn't, I didn't, absolutely. I didn't realise that until I came here. Mm-hmm. And um, England and Scotland, the things that I've done here, the fates, the shows, just everything. You, could, you wouldn't have done the that The natural in things in life, the things that make you feel as Normal if you're alive. Normal things in life. And even with my, my, my kids, from a selfish point of view, I was in jail when they were all, when, when mm-hmm. they, in their younger years. So you don't get that bit bond with, mm-hmm. with your children on, on an hour visit a week. Mm-hmm. And I, and I missed the bond with my kids all growing up mm-hmm. through my fault because I was in prison. But now they've got a wee lot here. He's seven years of age. I've got that bond and it's good. 
You want to make amends and, and I want to make amends, but that's not going to stop. I'm not. I'm not. And as I said earlier on, it was only three years ago there was people conspired to murder me. There's still, still people. If if the opportunity arose, would would, would probably take that opportunity. You're going to be honest, John. It's never. It's going to be the same till the day you die. I accept mate. that. I, no I, I'm, be... I'm not. I'm not going to cry or spill milk and say why are they doing that. Mm -hmm. I know why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I know why they want to do it. I know why they hate me. Mm -hmm. I know why they like me. I know why they love me. So uh, it's, I, I'll take the rough with the smooth. But, um, death smiles to us all. Only thing you can do is smile back. It's um, right. life. We don't know what the fuck's around the corner. That's we right. never know what's around the corner. And that's right. And much for you will not go by. Exactly, mate. And you've just got to keep trying and keep plodding on in life. And it, it must be difficult because if anybody ever tried to take your life, if they did take your life, then they're going to be held a hero. Absolutely, and that's what I've always said. And that that would probably give people the initiative or an individual the initiative to do it. But to do it. And 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 in Scotland and England and and uh, uh, every feedback that I've got has been positive, except them boys who are here wanting to kill me or can talk to me, kill me or conspiring to kill me. But uh, everything else has been good. Have you ever wrote a book or anything, Johnny? I've wrote uh, my my own autobiography, and there's been several books written about me, but not by me, where people has cast in on my name, like police officers and women. There was a woman who'd read a book. Uh, in love with a mad dog. There was a police officer who read a book, but it just f featured me prominently through the book. Obviously, that was to sell sell his book. Mm -hmm. um, there's been other books again, as I said, about me, but not not, not by no me. No one ever came forward to do a film. Or? I've done documentaries and I've signed a contract. A contract's open in case uh, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity for a film. Mm -hmm. It's for anybody watching. <laughs> the story of the Mad Dog. Uh, is, um, how did the name Mad Dog come I about? I don't know. I hate that name. That, 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 in you? my opinion, that, that that's a, a dog. A Mad Dog is a dog that foams at the mouth. Mm -hmm. That was uh, labelled to me by the by the, the then RUC and the, and, the, and the media. Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Yeah, do you know, cringe with that? No, name? I hear it. I hear it, and it's not really used as much now. Although, mm -hmm. well, nobody calls me Mad Dog. Uh -huh. Nobody close to me. Yeah. Maybe my enemy's Mad Dog, uh -huh. but I, I don't it like does, it. It's horrible. Uh, it's, it does, I it's prefer done Johnny. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, you didn't make that? So that was the name? No, the media, the, the, media, the media. The media. And it does think you hear I that I think name? it was some story, and I was just having a laugh with some journalist. It was from the, the Guardian too. It was a heavyweight for, uh, paper. And uh, so I was giving her, well, I'd give her enough, but I think this was all stage managed by the, by the then inner council. So Johnny, you give her a lift. So I give your woman a lift, and I'm just having banter with her. Mm -hmm. And she says, uh, did you ever have a Catholic in your car? And I says, I, uh, no, did you ever give a Catholic a lift in your car? I says, I, only a dead one and then in, in the boot. No, just joking. <laughs> Fuck, I was a headlines in the Guardian a couple of days later. <laughs> and then that's where the mad dog shit all came from, uh -huh. from that story. And that, that was a massive story. And it was just things that I was said in chess, you know what I mean? I'm hardly going to say that to someone uh -huh. that, that, that if it was true. Uh -huh. So but it wasn't that's true. That's people's perception. Yes, because we don't yes. know what you expect. Yeah, but no, but that that's not. And, that's people. And then, people realize when, when see that mad dog thing right away. That that puts a scar on somebody's man. Go oh, fuck, it, he's mad. Mm -hmm. But when people get to know me, they realize that's not. He's, that guy's not like that. Oh, you don't come across. I'm not. But I'm if not, you crossed I'm not, you, then I'd imagine. No, well, don't get me wrong. See what we were doing in Belfast. I mean, it wasn't going to Sunday school every Sunday. Mm -hmm. What we were doing is that we were engaging with the enemy. And when you engage him with the enemy, we weren't going with sponge mallets. Uh -huh. You know what I mean. How did you, so with the guns and the bombs, who had, who, was was it the same or did people have more than others? Or? Well, I think the professional IRA had more sophisticated weapons than loyalists. Mm -hmm. They had, they had, they, they, they got guns from uh, Gaddafi, Samtax from Gaddafi. Loyalists had to procure their weapons from whatever sources they could. And I think uh, just like assault rifles and machine guns and mm -hmm. small arms. Enough, enough to, engage, to, 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 keep, to keep the conflict going. It's for, crazy to think that there, there, there was a war for a long time. It just and it, was a, it, it was a dangerous war. Mm -hmm. It was dangerous and it was frightening. Mm -hmm. It was really frightening. What was the outcome for both parties for freedom? Was it just because, well, did that my, just go? The my, freedom? My, my, from, in my opinion, is the killings have stopped, mm -hmm. which is more, more, the most important thing. And hopefully, as time goes on, the, the bridges can be built. Belfast is a better place now. There's more jobs. There's more. It's, 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 Belfast was a ghost town twenty odd mm -hmm. years ago, and I mean a ghost town. But now it's thriving. More opportunities, which is the Absolutely. main thing. Less Absolutely. opportunities. Yep. Means there was no opportunities back drug then. Drug abuse. There was gambling. The, the abuse. only opportunities you had then was paramilitaries. Huh. So that, that was your life. That was your life. So you've no that outcome. It's just to and be. You, you, yeah, yeah. No, that was the thing to be. It was like supporting Rangers or Celtic over mm -hmm. here. 
It's the thing to do if you're a Protestant or a Catholic. Aye, aye. The thing to do over there was either join the IRA or join the UDA mm -hmm. and engage in the conflict. Which is less opportunity. So, mm -hmm. again, it always comes down to the, to the conditioning, Johnny, to think that you've grew up in that life, do you think it's normal? But no, for but you, yourself now, going for the future, what's your, do you have plans? Do you have visions? I'm just happy in life now. Just uh, just living a normal, quiet life. Just uh, get my wee boy. Uh, just spend as much time with him and quality time back and forward to England to see the rest yeah. of my family who an older family down in uh, Manchester so I travel to see them quite a lot and just enjoy life as much as I can Aye, good mate but for again Johnny for I know your high profile name to you on my show today it just shows you how far my show's coming mate so right. uh, well it's been a pleasure and, uh, and uh, I appreciate it mate everything for the thank future thank you very much yes. you're welcome take care thank you cheers you.